Alright, this is lesson 5.2, properties of functions. This is part 2, function notation. So, let's get started here. Uh, we can think of functions in terms of a function machine, just like I have right here. So, for instance, you can take some input value, all right, and we're going to put it inside this machine, and it's going to spit you out some out output value. In this specific function, what's going to happen is you're going to put in a number, it's going to multiply it by 2, and then add 3, and then you're going to get the output number. All right. So, let's complete this table on the uh, right-hand side here, and you'll see what I mean. So, for instance, they put in 1, they multiplied it by 2, and they got 2. They added 3, and they got 5. You put in 2, they multiplied by 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, and so on. The next one, if you put in 3, and you multiply by 2, you have 6, plus 3 is 9, fairly straightforward. If you put in 4, you multiply by 2, you have 8, plus 3 is 11, and of course the last one here to complete the little table would be 5. So what we're going to be looking at is how I can either give you a function in function notation, you can interpret what it is, or kind of vice versa in this lesson. So uh, the first question I have here is what is the rule for this function machine? Well, we're just going to write in terms of uh, words here. It basically is simple. You just say that we multiply by 2 and then add 3. All right, which numbers would complete this table? Well, I want you to do that first. So we've already done that. All right. Now, the next thing they want you to do right here is they want you to uh, make an equation for this. So an equation in terms of, let's say, x and y. So your independent variable, as we learned before, is your x. And your output is your y. Right? So this would be independent, dependent, input, output. So if we wanted to make an equation here, we are doing something to the x, and it's giving you our y. So what are we doing to the x? We're taking the x, and we multiplied it by 2 initially. We added 3 to it, and then that gave you y. All right. So that would be an equation that we could make for such a function. Let's start getting into the specific function notation down here. All right, consider the following function machine. This function machine calculates the value of quarters. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a certain amount of actual physical quarters. It's going to multiply it by 0.25 cents, which is what each one of those little coins is worth. And then you'll know basically how many quarters uh, you have in terms of a uh, dollar amount. So let's start here on the right-hand side. When the input is Q quarters and the output or value V in dollars is 0.25 Q, the equation that describes this function would be the following the value, or V in dollars, like so, is equal to 0.25Q. So what that means is, every time you put in a quarter, so let's say I put in one quarter, you'd multiply by 0.25 and you'd get 25 cents. Put in two quarters, multiply by 0.25 and you'd get 50 cents, and so on. So I know this is not exactly rocket science so far, but I want to start with a really easy one. Since what we say is V is a function of Q, we can write this equation using function notation. So what we'd do is we'd write it like so. We'd say V of Q is equal to 0.25Q. Now I want to talk about what this V of Q means. It basically means we have this function that we're calling V. And all of the variables that we have inside of it are these, whatever is in the brackets right there. So we have a function called v, and inside there's going to be nothing but q's, q meaning quarters. So this notation shows that v is a dependent variable, and therefore v must depend on q. All right. So it's not the other way around. It's not like all of a sudden um, the machine tells us that we have $2 in there, so therefore there must be 8 quarters. It's we put in 8 quarters, the machine tells you that you have $2. All right, so make sure you understand that for functions, they're only going to work in one direction. So the example that they conclude with on this one is they have v of 3. So what does that mean? Well, v of 3 represents the value of the function when q equals 3. So remember how we had the v of q right there. Since they've substituted in a 3, they're telling you that we have essentially just 3 quarters. So to show how we're going to do this, and this is what I want you to do. I know a lot of you are struggling with showing your work. You definitely need to for this unit. You'll start with v of q is equal to 0.25q, like so. That's our initial function. And we are substituting in a 3 for the q. When you substitute in a 3 for the q, then you just do it over here in the same fashion. And so when we do this, we have v of 3 is equal to 0.75. What does this mean? This means that the value 
of v is 0.75 when q is equal to 3. Okay. All right, on this side we're going to take a look at uh, one example, and uh, then you guys should be on your way. It's a fairly easy, straightforward lesson. So the equation I've given you here is v is equal to negative point 0.8d plus 50, and this represents the volume, v in liters, of the gas remaining in a vehicle's tank after traveling d kilometers. The gas tank is not refilled until it is empty. So I want you to describe this function. Write the equation in function notation. So let's first describe it. And what can we say about it? Well, we can say that the volume of gas remaining in a vehicle's tank is a function of the distance traveled. All right. So they say write the equation then in function notation. So what we would say is we have a function, this time it's called v, all right, and what variables are inside of it? It is d, okay, because the function uh, is dependent on how many kilometers we go, and kilometers are expressed in terms of d for kilometers. So we have v of d is equal to negative point zero eight d plus fifty. All right, so function notation, that's good to go. Now what they ask you to do in B is determine the value of V of 600. All that means is you're just going to substitute in 600 for the D and see what we get. So that's basically saying in this question that they've driven 600 kilometers and they want to know how much gasoline is left. So if we do this, we multiply negative point zero eight times 600 and that gives you negative 48. We add 50 to it. And simply, we have two left over, two being the amount of liters. So we could say two liters. In a sentence, when the car has traveled 600 kilometers, the gas tank has two liters remaining. So that's one way that they can ask questions like this. C is one that gives some students some issues when they, they're going to kind of ask it the opposite direction. This one says determine the value of D. So they want to know um, how many kilometers have they driven when V of D is equal to 26. Essentially what this means is they want to know how many kilometers they've driven when there's still 26 liters left in the tank. So again, we start off with our equation V of D. And for this one, we don't know what D is, right? But we do know that we can replace this V of D with 26. So I'm going to put 26 over here. And then this is just a matter of you using some of those basic skills that you would have learned back in grade 8 and 9 to rearrange this equation. So when you're rearranging equations like this to try and isolate for D, what you need to do is use reverse order of operations. So I'm going to deal with my addition and subtraction first, and then try to get rid of um, any multiplication and division to isolate my variable. So what I'll do here first is I will subtract 50 from both sides. When we do this, we have negative 24 is equal to negative 0.08d. I do expect you to show me every one of these steps. We will divide both sides by negative 0.08, like so. And we get d is equal to, when you divide this on out, we have 300. All right. So what does that number represent? It represents when there is 26 liters in the tank the vehicle has traveled 300 kilometers all right now with questions like this i always get students that they'll make some type of uh, algebraic error or i don't know some type of computational error and they'll tell me that the distance is like negative 300. All right. Now, keep in mind, like obviously in these word problems, you can have a negative distance. Um, sometimes the people will tell me that there's, you know, 10,000 kilometers. Um, that's how far they've driven on just one tank of gas. Always check to make sure that your answer is reasonable. OK? 
Okay. So this just is our basic kind of intro into what function notation is. Function notation is nice because it lets us know um, what the function is called and it tells you what all the variables are used um, inside of it. You're going to see that we're going to build on this um, quite a bit in the um, unit to come here.